Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here and today what I'm going to be bringing to you guys is an updated version of my PvP class here in New World. And what I've been using primarily for Wars and Outpost Rush is a lot of people have been commenting on the recent videos, asking about what the build is, how I've tweaked it and updated it over the recent patches and such. So I'm going to give you guys a quick update video on this today. Before we jump into the video, if you haven't done so already, please do make sure that you drop a subscribe down below to the channel. And without further ado, let's jump into the video. So the first thing that we are looking at here then is the attributes, of course. Now you can see that I have 210 focus, 110 constitution and 134 strength. This is basically a fortified buff paladin, so it's based around getting yourself a fortified, nice bit of healing on there with the focus, and basically keeping yourself alive in the PvP situations. If you're someone that finds yourself getting targeted a lot, or you find yourself someone who ends up getting in sticky situations in wars, whether it's because you like to dive in on players, or whether you like to be in the midst of the battle, or you just get melted by the mages, then this is a really good build for survivability, but also some really good damage. Now, as you can see, 210 focus, a lot of players will ask why 210 and not just 200. Essentially, you get a big boost to your healing at 210, and you also get the same at 160. So if you're going to go for 150 focus instead, make sure you take that up to 160 rather than the 150 mark for your healing bonus there. And then 210 is your next big one. Now, the reason you want to be at either of those markers is depending on how much strength you want. So you could either have 50 less on the focus here and a bit more strength, but then you do less healing. Or you can have, like me, more healing, more survivability through that, but you do do less base damage. Obviously, 110 constitution. I use the 40 constitution boost food to get this up to 150. That means we get the minus 10 to critical damage taken. Puts us on around 11,000 health as well, which is really, really good. And then, of course, you've got your strength up the top. That is because I pair this with either a great axe or a warhammer, both of which do a really good job. Now, in terms of what we actually use on the weapons, I'll put these up on the screen for you guys now so that you can actually have a look. You can see the trees there. I'm just going to talk through the trees rather than going over each individual kind of ability. But essentially, you've got Fortify and Sacred Ground as one of your ability perks on your armor. So that gives us a stack of Fortify alongside the Orb of Protection one. And we also take this passive on the Protector tree here called Protector's Touch, which is light or heavy attacks of the life staff, give us a stack of Fortify as well. Now... That means the Orb of Protection one, the Fortified Sacred Ground one, don't stack together. But these do stack separately alongside the um, this one here, Protector's Touch. So you can have two stacks of Fortify always active on yourself. And then, of course, you might get some others from other abilities on your weapons. Really, really good to have both of these going on because, as you guys will know, Fortify says there it reduces incoming damage. So if you've always got two stacks of this up, you're reducing your damage. Obviously, with your Orb of Protection as well, you've got instant heal effects on that. Same with your Sacred Ground when you stood in it, extra mana regen. And then, of course, with your Beacon as well, that allows you to give speed boost and heal to your allies. And also, you can use it on the floor to heal yourself, keeping yourself alive in these fights for even longer. Now, really importantly, you obviously want Absolved. And then, of course, that is no mana for your light and heavy attacks. And with that, you want Blissful Touch, so you can heal with light attacks as well. So if you do want to go into a bit more healing, then that is kind of where that will pick up for you with all of your reduction to cooldowns. Alongside, obviously, with this one here, which is reduced life staff abilities by 5% when you hit a light attack. Makes this a really, really good combo. Then I usually pair this with either the Warhammer or the Great Axe. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you guys the Great Axe build that I'm using. So I simply take Charge with no upgrades just to be able to manoeuvre about. And then I take Maelstrom and I take Gravity Well. These are literally for CC so that I can go in, trap people, CC them, do a lot of damage quickly. The rest of the build is based around critical damage, getting crits, and then healing off that. So all of these passives are based around that. You'll see whenever you attacks are blocked, you gain 15% damage stack, but then you've got things like critical damage increased by 10%. Great Axe attacks against foes below 30 have a 15% increased crit, and then Great Axe attacks against foes with below 30% health heal you for 10% damage done, etc. So it's all about sustain, keeping yourself alive, healing yourself, doing more critical damage, so more attack damage to the enemies, and then basically just finishing kills with that so you can switch between the two seamlessly and play a really good war paladin style role now of course with this you need certain types of armor so you've got yourself on the medium category overall 22.9 which of course gives us a 10 percent bonus damage and 15 percent bonus healing and also crowd control debuffs you apply last 10 percent longer gives you a nice bit of survivability good bit of sustain whilst also maintaining that healing buff which is really important for paladins in the current build of the game now 
With this, I use a void bit helmet and chest plate, mainly because the ice gauntlet is busted right now, and these give a very good amount of elemental reduction to damage. These also could be really good for mutations, anybody that's planning on doing that, so look out for those. Really good solid set, so I use heavy helmet and heavy chest plate on the void bent pieces there. We then go for medium gloves and medium boots and light legs, which makes the medium build overall. With those, you just want ability perks such as fortifying sacred ground, like I've got on the boots here, and you want to make sure that the attributes are relevant and of course, gem socket them all. I like to use Onyx or Diamond Gems, both of which provide you with some resistances. Onyx is 2.5 physical damage absorption, while these Diamond Gems are 1.9 physical and 0.63 elemental. So overall, just buffing the resistances that you have. Now looking just here on the jewelry, right now I am still using the Infinity Crystal until I can get something of equal value. Higher gear score, and of course, probably Legendary to get the three. Really good perks on that one. Then I've got a jewelry there that I've got crippling. You really want to get hearty if you can, it's really important. And then keen awareness for the crit build that I'm doing with the axe, really important. And then finally here on the earring, we've got regenerating, which is health every second, which is 0.48%. And purifying toast, so when you drink a regen person, you remove a debuff. That is really, really strong, and I would certainly recommend everybody runs that. If you can get your hands on it, it's a really, really good perk. Then... We have the Great Axe here. This one is again keen for the Critical Strike build that I'm doing. And then Plagued crits, so Critical Strikes against targets below 50% health. Inflict Disease for 6 seconds, reducing the healing effectiveness on the target by 24%. It's one of the new perks that was introduced. Really, really powerful with a crit build as well, because as soon as you drop someone below half, they can't get back up as quick, and you can easily finish the kills. Now, the gem I've got in this one is, of course, the Opportunist, which is the Emerald Gem. This one gives me plus 20% damage against targets with less than 30% health. Really, really useful and allows me to finish a lot of these kills paired with the Plagued Crits and the Keen and, of course, the Crit build overall as well. And then on the Life Staff, obviously, without question, we have Blessed. But then, of course, I've got Refreshing Divine's Embrace as well. Not really that useful to me, but until I can find a better Life Staff with Blessed and something else I want on, that is what I'm sticking with. So, certainly, Focus and Strength is really good for my build. This was only about a 1,000 gold on my server, which is really, really good for what it is. So, I've managed to grab that, but I do want to try and get a more useful second perk at least there. But that's something that is a work in progress for my build. Now, in terms of raw damage, then going back to the stats page or the attributes page, you guys can see I'm at 134 strength. So if we go ahead and we pull out the great axe here, I'll show you against the target dummies here. A light attack critical does 1585 or 1676, and a regular does 1246. And then a heavy attack does critical of 2931, and a heavy does. 1891 as a regular heavy and then if we go ahead and switch this out so that we go down to the 160 focus and that then puts our overall strength to 184 you guys will see that a light crit is 1801 or 1904 and a regular light is 1492 and then with a heavy we have a critical of 3329 and a regular heavy of 2221 so you can see the damage boost is quite significant so if you want less healing or you can afford less healing on yourself and your allies because again it's basically based around this fortify buff which you can afford to do because a fortify is the same effectiveness regardless of focus stat so it's just slightly less healing ticks that you get but you can obviously do a lot more damage whether it's worth it is up to you depends what you want to go for in the war that you're in or the pvp environment you're in and what you value more personally i really like going for the higher focus but just show you guys again light attacks with the life staff then we're doing 1075 with a critical and then we do 896 with a light and with a heavy attack we're doing 1265 regular and then we are doing 15, 18 as a critical. So that's really, really good. And that is at the 160 focus. And then if we take it back to the 210 focus, you guys will see regular light attacks do a thousand and the criticals do 1204, which is pretty decent. And then if we do some heavy attacks, these ones, the regulars are 1416 and the crits are 1699. So of course, life stuff's not really there for the damage, but particularly the light attacks popping a thousand to 1200 per hit is really, really good when you are trying to heal your allies as well. You can out put a very good amount of damage but do bear in mind these dummies do not have the resistances so you're probably going to be hitting anywhere from six to nine hundred per light attack in these wars depending what resistances players have so that is the build that i am rocking at the moment in wars and pvp situations of course it can be used for pve situations as well but it's primarily specialized around that fortify buff around the healing self healing and sustain with a crit build and a lot of lifesteal and that sort of thing with the great axe for pvp 
Of course, like I said, it does work well in PvE as well, but that is what it's meant for. So hopefully that clears it up for a lot of you guys that have been asking in the comments and stuff. Hopefully you can find this video useful if you do want to copy or kind of take parts from this build and use it in your own Great Axe War Paladin style build. It is really, really successful and has seen me some scores that you guys will be seeing on screen now from some wars. And it's been really, really good fun to play, so I would certainly recommend trying it out if you haven't already done so. Like I said at the start of today's video, guys, if you are new to the channel, please do make sure that you're dropping a subscribe down below. And if you did enjoy today's video and find it useful, please do drop me a like as well. Other than that, guys, that is going to be it for today. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your time. And I will catch you again tomorrow with another upload. Take care, guys, and peace. Thank you.